You can save 15% or more at Amazon when you pay with Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. Just go to purse.bogosity.tv. You can set your own discount. 5% gets you fastest delivery, or you can set it to 30% or more if you're not in a hurry. Purse makes it so easy to save money at Amazon by buying with crypto. Just go to purse.bogosity.tv and start saving now. Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the week of January 26th, 2020. The podcast that doesn't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. This is your host, Shane Killian. This is a special episode focusing on the recent gun rally in Virginia, but first, let's look at a quick update to one of last week's stories. Last week, Attorney General William Barr took biggest bug on emitter for lying about Apple, saying they weren't doing enough to assist the FBI with investigating the Pensacola shooting, specifically retrieving the information from the shooter's iPhones, when in fact they responded to every single request within hours, turning over several gigabytes of information. It was clear that Barr was just trying to pretend that Apple wasn't being responsive in order to have an excuse to push his anti-encryption and anti-privacy agenda. Now, we have more information as to just how much Apple has been kowtowing to government. They shelved plans to fully encrypt iCloud backups after the FBI claimed it would harm their ability to conduct investigations. Of course, as we've seen, the fact that iCloud backups aren't encrypted have led to a lot of issues, including the theft and release of nude photos from celebrities and even regular users, all of whom thought they were keeping it private between themselves and their lovers but the FBI says that their ability to spy on you trumps any negative consequences of any data theft from hackers, and Apple caved. Despite this, Trump piled on Barr's completely bogus accusation, accusing Apple of assisting, quote, killers, drug dealers, and other violent criminals. Senators from both major parties made similar comments in December, threatening legislation against encryption based on crimes against children they say they just can't investigate without it. What did they ever do before iPhones existed? Far from being locked out, law enforcement has an embarrassment of riches when it comes to their investigatory tools. But as we've discussed before, traditional detective work is becoming a lost art as law enforcement relies more and more on fancy toys. Also, as we've discussed, this has nothing whatsoever to do with investigating child abuse or mass shootings or anything else. They're just whining because they won't be able to do blanket mass data collection of everyone. But not only did Apple respond in a timely fashion, in each case in a matter of hours, to turn over iCloud backups of the shooter's data and also assisting unlocking his phones, their transparency report shows that complying with law enforcement investigations is par for the course for them. In fact, they turned over data on 18,000 users just in the first half of 2019, and these were all requests that were outside of any court order made on behalf of spy agencies. And even if users are using an encrypted service such as WhatsApp, Apple's backups can still get the messages from it as they're saved on the user's phone, as long as there isn't separate encryption placed on their storage. The fact that the news media is silent on this, and indeed keeps backing up the government story, is unconscionable. But we'll be talking in a little bit about just how horrible they are. If you're tired of these promos, regular supporters get the podcast early and ad-free. Just go to donate.bogosity.tv and sign up for Patreon or Subscribestar at any level. If you're on the Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or hotel, anyone on that network can get your traffic. Do you really trust all of those strangers? For that matter, do you really trust your ISP? A VPN can protect you from prying eyes, disguise your location, and even foil government censors. It's essential in this day and age. So go to vpn.pagosity.tv and you'll be taken to BoxPN. Starting at just $2.99 a month, you can get unlimited high-speed connections to VPN servers all over the world. And they don't log connections, so your privacy is assured. Traveling abroad, just VPN home, and don't worry about what those other governments are doing. Back at home, stop your ISP from traffic shaping and messing with the quality internet access you're paying good money for. 
You can connect from multiple machines at once, including your smartphone or tablet, and it supports all the secure standards, including OpenVPN and SSTP. Bypass sensors and surveillance with your own secure VPN connection. Go to vpn.pagosity.tv. So the big news this week, which will cover both Biggest Bogan Emitter and Idiot Extraordinaire, is the pro-gun rally in Richmond, Virginia this past Monday to show support for the right to keep and bear arms and opposition for Virginia's increasingly dangerous and tyrannical gun control laws. While they're still not as restrictive as they are in California, the laws are controversial due to just how few Virginians support them. Virginia became a blue state in 2018, for the first time since 1964, not because of any shifting opinion among the people, but because of a concerted effort from politicians in Washington, D.C., who moved from D.C. to Arlington specifically so they could vote in Virginia elections. The original goal was to elect Obama in a state that's traditionally been a swing state in presidential elections, but now it's spilled over to state offices. But as any heat map of the state will show you, the only blue areas are the Arlington-Fredericksburg area and Richmond. And yet, the Democratic Legislature of Virginia under Governor Ralph Northam claims to be exercising the will of the people as they pass stricter and stricter gun control laws in the formerly shall-issue state. The laws include a mandatory background check on top of the existing federal check, as well as the inclusion of juvenile offenses that are supposed to be sealed. It also includes mandatory fees, limiting the ability of minors to carry and use guns, a three-day waiting period for residents and 10 for non-residents, a maximum of one handgun purchase per month, increased delays and requirements on permits, and many more. Most of this was all rolled together and passed without debate the day after the bills passed committee. There was a red flag law as well, but it got delayed. Also filed but yet to be considered are an assault firearms ban that basically defines everything except a revolver as an assault firearm and a mass confiscation law. And in case you're going to go with the news media's line that confiscation is just paranoid conspiracy stuff, in two separate requests, Governor Northam has requested $4 million and $3.5 million to enforce gun confiscation laws which haven't even passed yet. 91 of Virginia's 95 counties, as well as 15 cities and 31 towns, have declared themselves Second Amendment sanctuaries, with sheriffs and other officials saying they refuse to violate their oaths of office to actively comply with these illegal laws. So January 20th, Martin Luther King Day, is considered Lobby Day in Virginia, being the day various groups come to Richmond to protest or show support for various policies at the Capitol. This year, gun owners and Second Amendment supporters, particularly the Virginia Citizens Defense League, but also many other supporters throughout Virginia and even from elsewhere in the country, came out in the thousands. Northam declared a state of emergency because of course he did. He also directed the building of fences to keep protesters pinned in, a blatant First Amendment violation. He also illegally attempted to ban guns, helmets, shields, pepper spray, glass bottles, fireworks, baseballs, and even sticks. And yes, that's illegally. Virginia state law forbids using a state of emergency to ban guns unless the area in question is declared a shelter. The reason for all of this is because, of course, gun owners are violent, dangerous people, and this will all result in tons of shootouts. But that's for the next two segments. Spoiler alert, there was no violence. The protesters even cleaned up after themselves. Unfortunately, all of the fear-mongering we're about to cover made other protesters less likely to show up. Again, Lobby Day is generally a day for diverse opinions on a myriad of subjects to be heard. Northam and his news media cronies scared all of them off. Stick around and listen. We live in a world where light bulbs connect to the internet, and recent attacks on them prove that your online security is under threat like never before. Not only your websites, but the internet-enabled devices you buy. And the biggest problem is weak passwords. That's why you need LastPass. LastPass allows you to randomly generate strong, unique passwords on the web and on your internet-enabled devices, all protected by one master password. 
LastPass sets up in minutes and gives you secure automatic logins throughout the web, synchronizing across all your browsers, all your computers, and even your mobile devices, at home, at work, or on the road. It even securely stores sensitive form data, including credit card numbers, backup sensitive documents, software licenses, Wi-Fi logins, and more. And with LastPass Premium, you can get these benefits on other applications, manage passwords for your entire family, and also get priority customer support. Sign up at password.bogosity.tv for a free month of LastPass Premium. Log in securely everywhere using the last password you'll ever have to remember. Go to password.bogosity.tv and get LastPass now. So yeah, Northam is this week's biggest bogan emitter for scaremongering, belittling gun owners, and trying to whip up undeserved support. He held a press conference declaring a state of emergency saying, quote, Credible intelligence gathered by Virginia's law enforcement agencies indicates that tens of thousands of advocates plan to converge on Capitol Square for events culminating on January 20, 2020. Available information suggests that a substantial number of these demonstrators are expected to come from outside the Commonwealth, may be armed, and have as their purpose not peaceful assembly, but violence, rioting, and insurrection. No word as of yet on whether anyone in these agencies will be fired for gross incompetence. In fact, live streams from all over the protests reveal it all to be one big snore. I mean, that didn't stop YouTube taking them down and giving the channel's content strikes. Apparently, they really didn't want people seeing what was really going on, which was basically nothing. But it's actually kind of impressive that a crowd that CNN estimated to be 10,000 strong had zero issues. Also amazing how well even Antifa behaves when there's armed people around. One woman was arrested for refusing to remove a neckerchief from her mouth, because apparently that's only legal if you're Muslim. Other than that, there were zero arrests. Northam warned of white nationalist rhetoric and, citation needed, and also of out-of-state militia groups, apparently forgetting that the militia is the entire reason for the Second Amendment to begin with. By the way, there are an awful lot of black faces there for a white nationalist rally. And of the white protesters, there are no reports of any of them having taken photos in blackface standing next to a KKK member. But this seems to be the face of the Democrats at least since Hillary Clinton's run for president in 2016. Call your opposition abnormal or deplorable or whatever, make people's political positions an excuse for special sanctions, and stylize them as violent enemies of the people all while playing into the urban-rural divide. Because, I mean, if there's any effective way to understand why the Democrats hate the Electoral College, it's in those heat maps I mentioned earlier. Like Virginia, the nationwide heat map shows Democrats being concentrated in a few urban areas, wanting to make rules that apply for everyone else. Because, of course, everyone else is just stupid, violent rednecks who need to be kept in line by their wise overlords. At any rate, there just isn't really any competition for Ralph Northam being this week's biggest bogan emitter. Do you have children? Or nieces or nephews? Are you homeschooling? Or just want to counter some of the socialist indoctrination most children get in school? If so, go to bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins and you'll be taken to a website where you can get some great books for elementary age children. The Tuttle Twins books are books about liberty and free market economics that include children's versions of Bastiat's The Law, Leonard Reed's I Pencil, and Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, as well as books about the Federal Reserve and how regulations protect business cronies. They'll learn about the harm caused by eminent domain, or regulations passed in the name of safety, and fundamental concepts of liberty. And as you can see from the sample pages on the website, they're all easy to read and nicely illustrated. They're just $9.99 a piece, or get a special discount as well as free bonuses when you purchase all five. You can even buy in bulk to donate to schools and local libraries. So get the Tuttle Twins books at bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins. And now let's putrefy this week's Idiot Extraordinary! And 
And as promised, it's the news media, and buckle in, folks, because we're talking about their completely idiotic fear-mongering around Lobby Day, with, of course, zero backtracking after things didn't go the way they predicted. So, for example, we have NBC News reporter Ben Collins calling it a white nationalist rally in a deleted tweet, ironically while warning against spreading, quote, made-up stuff. His support for it was, quote, enormous amounts of 4chan and QAnon chatter. His replacement tweet read in part, White nationalists, including militant group The Base, have been planning violent action at the event. Let's take a gander at some of the other offenders. The Washington Times, tagline, Real Trusted News, wrote, The expected arrival of thousands of gun rights activists, along with members of militia groups and white supremacists, raised fears the state could again see the type of violence that exploded in Charlottesville in 2017. What, you mean the one where three people died and two of them were due to faulty government maintenance of a helicopter? The rally coincides with the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, which is typically a chance for everyday citizens to use a day off work to lobby their legislators. However, the threat of violence largely kept other groups away from the Capitol on Monday, including gun control groups that hold an annual vigil for victims of gun violence. Yeah, well, the threat didn't come from the protesters, did it? But from the governor and the news media. So whose fault is that? Then there's the BBC headline, Virginia Gun Rally, Authorities Gear Up for Unrest in Richmond. Various groups, including armed militia, right-wing extremists, and local Antifa, or anti-fascist movement, were expected to attend. Democratic presidential candidate Mike Bloomberg was a frequent target for his spending on gun control efforts, so was the state governor, Mr. Northam. President Donald Trump risked ratcheting up tensions when he tweeted on Saturday. The Lobby Day rally had been seized upon by far-right extremists. Some of those groups, including the base, explicitly state their aim is inciting a race war in the U.S. The event has been compared to the deadly white nationalist rally in Charlottesville in 2017, where a 32-year-old counter-protester was killed by a rally-goer and violent clashes broke out around the city between rally-goers and Antifa. Then there's CBS, headline... Credible threats of violence as pro-gun rally is held in Richmond, FBI says. The FBI and local law enforcement say they've received credible threats of violence ahead of a gun rights rally in Richmond, Virginia Monday, where Democrats are proposing new gun laws. Tens of thousands of people, including white supremacist groups and militias, may attend. Mary McCord, the legal director for Georgetown Law's Institute for Constitutional Advocacy and Protection, said the challenge in a situation like the one in Richmond is balancing the protection of public safety with the preservation of First Amendment rights. It's a blow to the First Amendment that gun safety advocates don't feel safe participating, she said. And again, whose fault is that? How about Vox? An annual lobby day has resulted in a state of emergency and online calls for a civil war. They said it will be attended by, quote, a host of militia groups, conspiracy theorists, and far-right extremists, some of whom believe the rally in Richmond will represent the first shot of a new civil war. One member of the Virginia General Assembly was so beset by death threats that he is currently staying in a safe house. The Lobby Day was intended to be an opportunity for Virginia gun owners to voice their displeasure with proposed gun control measures. Instead, the event has raised fears of mass violence akin to or worse than Unite the Right. The legislation being discussed has been heavily distorted online by far-right individuals and websites, with some claiming the proposed bills will result in full-scale gun confiscation by the government. The extremist rhetoric and explicit threats of violence online have raised real concerns from law enforcement, leading Virginia to declare a state of emergency and ban guns on state capitol grounds. Those threats center on the idea that Richmond could be the site for the violent beginnings of a civil war, one sparked by restrictions on gun rights. And even outside of the media, you had groups like Amnesty International who wrote, 
Upcoming Virginia gun rally threatens communities. These hate-based policies lead to gross and unspeakable gun violence. Furthermore, the vile decision to hold such a rally on a day when our country recognizes the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a peaceful civil rights leader whose life ended in gun violence, is particularly troubling. By the way, King was a gun owner and Second Amendment supporter. When extremists and white supremacists are able to use guns to intimidate and harass marginalized communities, they create a climate of fear and inflict serious harm without even needing to pull the trigger. By failing to prevent those who mean harm from having easy access to guns, our government is failing in its responsibility to place people before guns. And even after the fact, even after there was no violence whatsoever, you have, for example, the Washington Post saying, Chance of USA, USA broke out every few minutes, but by 10.15 a.m., there were no signs of violence or conflict with law enforcement officers. Hey, WAPO, what's with the word but? Are you trying to say that people who chant USA are fundamentally violent? Grammatically, that's what that would mean. And that's what most readers would take from it. Bloomberg reported that the protesters, quote, were mostly white and male. Washington Times said the same thing. Of course, you could say the same thing about a Bernie rally or the Democratic debates. By the way, none of them mentioned that the VCDL has a pro-gun rally there every year, and it's always been peaceful. If the news media is going for another idiot of the year, they're off to a good start. Of course, it's still way too early to tell, but they're definitely this week's... Idiot Extraordinary! Well, that wraps up this. It's an 88 Magnum. It shoots through schools. Edition of the Gossity Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please keep this podcast going by hitting like and subscribe and supporting in one of several different ways you can find at donate.bogosity.tv, including PayPal, cryptocurrency, or subscribing at Patreon or Subscribestar to listen early and ad-free. Also, please come to discord.bogosity.tv where you can join the discussion and post a question, statement, news article, or rant. Thank you for listening. Until next time, here's a quote from L. Neil Smith. A person had better be prepared to defend himself in this world because, thanks mostly to the laws of physics, nobody, not your neighbors, not your friends, not even your family, and especially not the police, can be counted on to be there when you need them. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution on Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Bogosity. are annoying, but ad blockers prevent publishers from making money. What if you could support your favorite websites, YouTube creators, Twitch streamers, social accounts, and many more ad-free and without paying anything, and even make some money yourself? It's not a pipe dream, it's airtime. Go to airtime.bogosity.tv and get the browser extension and you'll earn cryptocurrency for the sites you visit, and so will the publisher. This is not a crypto miner. You and the publisher will both get part of the reward from current miners of the BitTube cryptocurrency, with no middleman taking a cut. Even if the publisher hasn't signed up yet, his tube will be put into a dedicated wallet that he can claim upon sign-up. You can also use your tube to tip publishers and even purchase products. Airtime monetizes users and publishers with no ads or crypto miners. Go to airtime.bogosity.tv and start making money now.